for this tutorial, you will need a four weight cotton yarn. I used Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie. This is an 85 gram ball. There are 131 yards in here. Color is refreshing. Hook size they recommend is 5.5 millimeter. I actually used a six millimeter. I made a towel and two dish cloths or face cloths. And this is what I had left out of three balls. Then I also made some pink ones out of this same kind of yarn. I used the same hook size, a six millimeter. This color is called Blissful. Now the set I made was a little smaller, so that's why I have more yarn left out of the three ball balls. This is what I have left. You will also need a button for the towel. This size of button is uh, one and one eighth um, cent uh, inches, one and one eighth inches. But a one and a quarter inch will also work. You don't have to worry about making any buttonholes because there's going to be holes in your pattern that you can slip the button through. All right, so let's get started. Okay, you're going to make a chain of a multiple of three plus two. So what I've done here is I've chained 30 plus two. Now the first row is going to be single crochet all the way across. So second chain from the hook, put your first single crochet, and then a single crochet in every chain till you get to the end of your chain. I'll meet you at the end of the chain of the row of single crochets. Now we're at the end of our row of single crochets. We are going to chain two and turn. Now in this very first stitch right here, we're going to make a single crochet Make a half double crochet in that same stitch and then a double crochet in that same stitch. Okay, like that, and then we're going to skip two stitches one, two, and go into the third one with single crochet, half double. and then a double. This is what we're going to be repeating across this row. Okay, skip two stitches, one, two, go in the next one with a single crochet. A half double and a double. Continue on like that for this row. Again, that's skip two stitches, go in the third one with a single crochet, a half double, and a double. Okay, and I'll meet you at the end of this row. Now when you get to the end of this row, which is row two, you're going to have one, two, three stitches left. So just go ahead and make a single crochet into that last stitch. 
chain two and turn your work. Now on this very first stitch, make a single crochet, a half double, and a double crochet. And then you're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and in this one, you'll repeat what we just did in this first stitch. So all you need to do really is look for this space all along, and that's what you will go into with your single crochet, half double, and then your double crochet. Okay, right in here is where we're going. Single crochet, half double, and double. Continue along doing that for this row, right in this space here. Single crochet, Half double. We need some more yarn. And then your double. So I'll meet you at the end of this row. When you get to the end of this row, which is row three, You'll have these three stitches left, one, two, three, right here. And just put a single crochet right into that one. Chain two, turn your work. And we're just gonna repeat that row we just did. A single crochet in the first, half double, and a double, and then go to your space right here. Oh, is that uh, blurring out? I'm so sorry space right here put your single crochet half double and double crochet in there and that's how we're going to continue this and when I get to the end I will tell you how many rows I made but this is how it's working up Alright, so I'm just going to finish this off. I've done about 20 rows of the, um, I guess I'll call them shells. Uh, so I'm not counting the single crochet row I did at the beginning. So we just want to make it into a square. So how many rows it takes to make it into a square. Um, so I think there's about 20. Alright, so now we're just going to finish off that last stitch with that single crochet. Then we're gonna chain two. Um, we're gonna make a border that's the same as this shell stitch. If you want to, you don't have to. <laughs> so I've chained two, and then I'm going to just go um, right into that same stitch with a single crochet, the half double, and then the double. And then I'm just going to eyeball it because remember throughout we skipped two stitches before we made our, our shell. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it a little bit. And I guess I'll 
fit it in here. So we'll do the single crochet, the half double, and then the double. Now this piece measured about um, nine by nine inches. That's before the border. So when I'm done the border, I'll let you know how much, how big it is after that. So single crochet, half double, and then double. And just go all the way around the entire four sides. And then now when we come back, I'll show you what to do when we get back to this beginning part. But first, when we get to our first corner, we need to go around it. So we need to put in a, some extra stitches. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two shells right in that same corner. So single, half double, and a double, and then I'm going to do it again. The single, half double, and double, and then we skip two, go in the next space, and a single, and a half double, and double, and then just continue on like that till you do your border. That is what, oh, that's just my tail. Okay. I'll meet you at the end of the border. All right, so I'm coming to the end of the border. And this is where I started it. And I put another fan or shell stitch, like almost right in the same space, but not quite because it would leave too big of a hole, I think, in this case. Um, so I'm just gonna slip stitch it right into the top of that first one I made. And then, uh, We will cut that tail and then um, then you can sew in your tail. So I measured this and with the border, this um, cloth, whether you use it as a dishcloth or a washcloth, measures um, measure 10 by 10 with the border. So it was 9 by 9 before the border, 10 by 10 after the border. Of course, you can make it any size you want. <laughs> so, um, we are going to be starting on the towel next. All right, so now the towel is gonna to be the same pattern, but of course it's gonna be wider. So it's gonna be multiples of three plus two, and uh, I'm going to chain 42 plus two and then do the row of single crochet and then do the, what I was calling shell stitch, the same as the dishcloth slash washcloth. And the only difference will be up near the top of the towel. So once I have my rows done and I've measured roughly how long the towel is and how wide it is once it's worked up, then, um, I will let you know that and then I will tell you how to do the top of the towel. So I will see you then. Go ahead and start on your chain 42 plus 2 and then your rows. I'll be back. Alright, so when you have um, the length you want of your towel, mine is... Um, 38 rows and plus the single crochet row would be 39 
and that's before we get to our strap. So then what we do is we we uh, chain one and turn and then put a single crochet in that very first stitch and then a single crochet in every stitch after that for this entire row. So continue that, I'll meet you at the end of this row. Now I've made my last single crochet at the end of this row. So now we're gonna chain one and turn. Now for this next row, we're going to make a single crochet in the first, very first stitch, very first stitch. And then we're going to do two single crochets together in the next two stitches. So insert your hook, grab your loop, pull it through, insert your hook in the next stitch, grab your loop, pull it through. You have three loops on the hook, pull through all three loops. And then we'll do a single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to do two together again in the next two. Put your hook through, pull up a loop, put your hook through the next single crochet, pull up a loop, three on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And that's how we're going to alternate for this row. Two together. Oops. Through all three in the loop, and then a single crochet in here. Two together, and so on. And I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, I'm at the end of this row. I have one left. I'm just going to put a single crochet in there. If you have two left, after you've done your decrease, just put a single crochet in both of them. I don't really want to put a sing, uh, um, decrease right on the last two. I, I just don't want it to pull in at the side. Okay, so then you chain one. Turn your work. And then you do the same thing for this row. Put a single crochet in the first stitch. And then two single crochets together in the next two stitches. And then a single crochet. And then two together in the next two stitches. So just continue that all along this row and I'll meet you at the end of this row. So I'm at the end of this row and I do have two left, so I'm just going to put a single crochet in each one. Chain one, turn my work, see how it's um, getting narrower. So now let's continue doing that. Single crochet in the first, single crochet. The next two will be single crochet together. So continue that. And then where you, when you get to a row that has, you know, um, like, so you want to end on a row making 10 single crochets. So when I get to that row, I'll show you. Okay, I'm at the end of this row. I didn't realize I was so close to the making the, the 10 single crochet row. All right, so chain one. Turn your work like before. 
Now for this row, let's see, I have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 stitches. So I'm going to decrease that into 10. Okay, so single crochet in the first stitch. And then two together. So that means we have two single crochets. And right here, one and two. So I'll do one single crochet in the next stitch. So now we have three. And we're gonna do uh, two single crochets together. So that means we have four stitches. Sorry, I need more yarn here. Okay, <laughs> and then a single crochet in the next, that's five. And then I'm gonna put these two together. So that's six. Come on in there, that's seven. And then I'm gonna put two single crochets together here. So that's eight, and then I have two left. So that's nine. And then this last one on the end is 10. So now we have, we have our 10 single crochets. Now that's important because we're going to be doing this, um, this shell stitch that we've done all throughout. We're gonna do that in the handle um, as well. So let's go. We are going to chain um, two, make a single crochet in that first one, make a half double in the next, I mean in the same stitch, and then a double crochet in that same stitch. And then we're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and then do the same thing, the single crochet, the half double, and the double, all in um, that one stitch. And then skip one, two, go into the next with the single crochet. and then the double and then we're going to skip one two and then go into the last stitch with a single crochet then we're going to chain two, turn our work, and then start again with the, um, the little shells. So single crochet, half double, and double crochet. I hope that's not getting blurry for you. I got the phone right in front of my face. So <laughs> I look in the in the screen and then I look over it to see what I'm doing exactly. <laughs> All right, so then you skip two and then this big space, you do your single crochet, half double and double in that same spot.
and double. And then in that last one, just make this single crochet right at the very end. And chain two and turn and continue on with that. So this is going to be your strap that goes over uh, the stove handle. And I will continue on with this and then I'll show, I'll come back and tell you how many rows I made. And you don't have to worry about making a buttonhole because you're going to use, um, you're going to use one of these holes. Find one of the holes that's in the center, like up further, of course. And um, that'll be your buttonhole. All right. I'll be right back. Now I've completed this strap. It's uh, 14 rows and it measures about six inches. Um, I find that when you hang them over the handle of your stove, the straps do stretch out. So it's better to have it a little shorter than longer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same pattern um, all the way around the border of the entire towel. Let me move this back a bit. So like you did before with the cloths. Um, just do your single crochet. Am I blurry there? Half double and then double. I don't even really probably have to show you this, right? It's the same thing you do did with your cloth. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll just show you how to go around the corner, but I'm sure you all know this stuff. Unless you're brand new at crochet. I had to add another skein, so um, I tied it together here. Just going to try to go right over top of that. And then whatever ends pop out, I'll sew them in. <laughs> like that one. <laughs> I think these are great Christmas presents and then sometimes the people that you give them to get spoiled <laughs> just because the dish cloths, you know, they work so great and they last so long and then all of a sudden they're like placing an order with you because now they're hooked. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually do custom orders anymore. I used to, but I haven't. I don't know, it was just getting, I know it's, you know, you'd love to get an order, but, um, you know, make some extra money, buy some more yarn, or pay some bills, or buy groceries, but um, it was just getting to be too much. I mean, it's fabulous that I had tons of sales, but, you know, it's just when you're, you know how long it takes to crochet something, right? You can't just do it in a... Um, you know, in an hour, it takes, sometimes it takes a week or two weeks or something to, to make something, especially like a big object, like a blanket, you know. All right, so what I did was I put, put two of those shell stitch things in the corner, so then it's just easier to go around the corner there. And so you just continue on like that, like you did with your dishcloth or, or washcloth, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and then I'll come back with the finished painted buttons and uh, show you what the completed towels look like. Now, if you have buttons, but you don't have the right color, 
and you have tons and tons and tons of nail polish, go ahead and use your nail polish as a paint. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I need pink and I need blue. So I have, <clears throat> I have tons of blue, I have tons of pink. <laughs> I haven't worn nail polish for two, about two years. The last time I wore it was at our nephew's wedding. And uh, my nails are so much stronger. They grow like crazy. I'm always having to cut them. They don't break as easily. It's just, they're much more healthy, healthier. So yeah, we're just gonna, gonna paint these um, buttons. You'll have to do a few coats and um, Kitties are playing here. I don't know if you could hear that. Banging on the cupboard. And um, you have to do a few coats and then put a top coat, a clear top coat. Can you see me? I got my thumb in the way there. It's just painting. I guess a base coat may have been a good idea. Like a primer, use it as a primer, right? Oh, that's quite all right. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Felt like I was gonna cough. Okay. So I'll continue painting that, but I'm gonna just try this pink out on the red here. And this pink one here. I've done this many, many times. I've made bags or purses and painted the buttons with uh, nail polish. I tell you, not everything that you have has one purpose. <laughs> you can use it for many, many different things. I made a multicolored purse and um, the it was mostly black, but I had included some multicolored yarn. So I did a multicolored button and I gave it to one of my neighbors for her birthday. This was a few years back. And she's like, wow, look at that button. And I told her it was just, I just painted it with nail polish. And she couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> okay. So I'm just gonna let those dry for a while and then uh, put a couple more coats and I'll show you the finished, the finished buttons. Now, as you can see, I changed the color of my button. I had the dark blue on it and so I just decided I wanted to go matchy-matchy with the color of the yarn. So I painted it like this kind of like turquoise and um, I put two coats on and then two coats of the top coat. And before we sew the button on, I'm going to take you over to the stove and show you how to position the button. All right, so what I like to do is put, okay, just turning the way, so sorry. All right, I like to hang it on here because there is some weight to this, so it's gonna stretch the handle a bit. And you want the, you know, button in the right place. And so I like to put it a little bit, a little bit past those, uh, or right around those single crochets we did when we did the decrease. So, um, Thinking, I want the button right here. So I'm gonna mark the back of where, roughly where I want to put the button. And I'm trying not to get the front oh, hooked in there. All right, so we'll go back to the table. 
Okay, so here's our um, flap, handle, whatever you want to call it. And see where I've marked it? It's really low down, right? But that's where I'm going to sew the button. I need some fabric to grab onto, so I'm going to have to move it up just a little. And I like to leave a long tail so that I can um, tie it at the back. Oops. Yeah, so I like this uh, more matchy-matchy color. I was also working with pink, so... <laughs> Got a little bit of pink nail polish on here. Yeah, I'm going to go through this maybe four times. Just two. Three. And four. So then I'll take my ends and I will just tie them together. And then I'll sew them, sew them in. Now we're going to take a look at our flap here. And there we go. So one and one eighth button. Seems to be a nice size. So that's it. And you'll see some pictures after this of it hanging on the stove.